It's Dr. Melissa McCreary from TooMuchOnHerPlate.com, and today I want to talk to you about self-care. Specifically, let's talk about what self-care has to do with overeating. Most of the time when women are trying to make a change with the way that they eat or with their weight, they do what seems really logical, which is to focus on the food and what they're going to eat. The problem is that's only one piece of the puzzle. And if you don't focus on the reason that you have the patterns that you do with food, the reasons that the food is calling to you at 3 o'clock in the afternoon or before you go to bed or the reasons that your cravings feel so uncontrollable, then that food continues to have that really undefined power in your life. If you really want to be effective and make changes that last, then it would be really smart to take a look at why it is that food has the power that it does in your life and cut off the power source. So when you look at most of the overeating that women do, particularly busy women who have a lot on their plates, it's stress eating, comfort eating, mindless eating, eating to procrastinate, eating, eating to numb out, eating to reward yourself, eating to push away things that you don't feel like you have time to deal with or feelings that you don't want to have. Most of the time in so many different circumstances, overeating is really a substitute for high quality self-care. When you're not getting your needs met, when you're not getting what your spirit and your soul are craving, when you're not feeling happy or acknowledged or rewarded or taken care of, food can really easily become the band-aid or the patch that kind of holds things together. It can become the thing that helps you not think about what's really going on. Or it can become a well-intentioned but misinformed attempt at trying to give yourself what you really need. The problem is it sets up a vicious cycle, right? Because the food isn't what you really need. If what you're needing is self-care, if what your spirit needs is to be fed, if you're craving something that just isn't food, then an hour from now, a day from now, next week, the feelings, the things that got you craving food in the first place, they're still going to be there and that hunger is going to come back. Self-care being connected to what it is that you really want and need and crave in your life and approaching those needs with compassion, even if in the moment there's nothing you can do to take care of those needs other than to say they're there and they're really important, that kind of self-care is a key piece of the puzzle when it comes to making peace with food, creating freedom from overeating, and making changes that are going to last with your eating and your weight. My challenge to you, the one I want you to take today, is to take a good, honest look at the way self-care is showing up in your life. How are you taking care of yourself? And where could you use more attention to self-care and to self-nurturing? Take an inventory and then today make a commitment to one step, one action that you absolutely can do that will move you one inch closer to being well cared for. If this is a hard topic for you, if your mind goes blank when you try to think of ideas or ways to take better care of yourself, or if it feels impossible given all that you have going on, I have you covered. You can download a free guide, 25 Ways to Improve Your Self-Care and Short Circuit Overeating. Just go to toomuchonherplate.com forward slash self-care-ideas. Self-care doesn't need to be overwhelming. It shouldn't add more stress, but it does need to happen. Making sure that self-care is a piece of your daily life is one of the key pieces to taking control of overeating.